Thank you, Randy Fisher, your host for the night. I'll really just be largely introducing other people. Um, we are live streaming on Facebook, so uh, fair one. Keep it clean. How did we get here? Uh, last year at Free Comic Day, we talked about this last year, uh, Mark Nathan had the idea of this award show. We announced it off of friends and family of Mike Maringo. Everybody was very positive about it, and we just made it happen in a very short period of time. Um, we had very positive feedback, um, and we built upon that this year. Uh, we had a lot more time to plan this year. We had a, a longer nomination period. We had a longer voting period. I don't know if you guys like that or not. I'd be interested in your feedback. At, at some level, I felt like the, the urgency was a good thing uh, last year, but um, we also had fantastic participation this year. Um, how did I get here? I ask myself that every meeting we have. Um, we were talking about a similar format to the awards that we used to host. And because of the limited time frame, we just couldn't find the people that we wanted to be able to, to do this gig. And Mark Nathan said, well, I think, Randy, it's going to be you. Um, he didn't ask if I had a history of fainting, uh, which I do. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a true statement. Yeah. Uh, Bum, it's a rabbi, very tall man, Randy, very short boy. And he wanted to look at me in the eye. And the blood goes down, and eventually Randy went down. Um, okay. Uh, we had a new aspect this year where publishers uh, participated in the nomination process. They were able to submit works that they felt were worthy of consideration. We had uh, over 20 participating uh, publishers donating anything from a single title to a wide variety of their 2017 catalog. And the jurors chose works from the submissions as well as titles and publishers with whom I was completely unfamiliar. Um, and I do keep up on solicitations and who's publishing what and who's a pro and who's not. Um, so it was very interesting to kind of see where everything ended up. Uh, we had voters from almost 120 countries during the nomination period, and it was incremental over last year during the voting period as well. So um, very successful endeavor for year two, and it wasn't just a blip last year. So I want to recognize a couple of people that have contributed to this evening and who will be presenting this evening and everything else. Uh, just to start with staff. Uh, Steve Conley is responsible for all of the graphics and webmaster you see. Uh, did a fantastic job. <laughs> Love the design, everything. Uh, Matt Merritt, who is running our audiovisual tonight from the show's perspective. Uh, he is also responsible for the nomination challenge, which is a thankless job because we get I mean, thousands and thousands of people that submit. Um, tough gig. And he also um, works on the polling site. Uh, David Jeffrey is responsible for this lovely banquet. He also works on the sponsorship opportunities and the gift bags that you have at your table. So if you enjoy what you're seeing and carrying home, and please be careful lifting the bags because they're heavy and you might carry it from the bottom. Uh, thank David. Mark Nathan, everybody knows. Uh, uh, Constance, our convention squirrel, again, uh, the lovely stuff are from Constance. Um, Andy Tran uh, did the gift bag orders themselves, like the physical gift bags. They're lovely this year. And uh, we have our photographers. Uh, we have a second one this year. Bruce Guthrie, if you've been here with us before, if you've been to the show before, you see him around. And John Malusky is our second photographer. He's in the back of the room center. We'll be taking head-on shots. And then uh, Eric Mass is doing some videography tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank the jury from this year. Michael Kavna, Marty Grosser, Carla Marsh Southern, Rob Stoll, and Gus Vasquez. If you were watching the social media feeds, a couple of them posted the piles of books that they had to, to review, which, I, you know, it's probably not a terrible job, but... Uh, the panel of jurors every year, uh, obviously, Todd DeZago, Craig Russo, Mark Wade, and Matt Waringo. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, your presenters tonight will be Christy Blanche and Tom Zauer, David and Julia Peterson, Dennis Cullen, Jenny Frisman and Winona Fraven, uh, Todd Zago, Craig Russo, Mark Wade, and Matt Waringo, Bob Stowe and Gus Vasquez, Louise Simonson, and uh, correction in your um, your program for the night, Jeff Parker, who is going to call Castle Bay Blue Dog. Great talk stepped up. So Craig will be with us. You can talk to them later, too. Uh, the Hero Initiative, Kevin Brogan, put the Hero Awards together as well as the content and the slides. Thank you very much for Kevin, Kevin's efforts. <laughs> the awards themselves, Josh Gold, put them together, they're lovely. The, yes, Josh. Uh, the program, as well as the presentation on the screen, is John Gallagher's work. Came out fantastic this year. I love the kind of the format. I wanted to have bag and boards with um, And finally, our, our sponsors. The presenting sponsors, the Baltimore Comic Con and Cards, Comics, and Collectibles, of course. Uh, gold sponsors, Bill Studios and the JP Family Enterprises. Silver sponsors, Action Lab Entertainment, Source Point Press, South Carolina Comic Con, Valiant Entertainment, and our friendship sponsor, the John Quarterly, as well as our guest bag sponsors, Ambrose Comic Arts, Action Lab Entertainment, Archie Comic Book uh, Publications, excuse me, Boom Studios, Dark Horse Comics, Diamond Comic Distributors, Harper Collins, IDW Publishing, Lion Forge, Scholastic, Shine Post Mint, Tokyo Pop, and Valiant Entertainment. <laughs> what? That's right, that's why it's heavy. Uh, it's a big bag. All right. Um, so before I introduce our keynote speaker, uh, I just want to note that we will have drinks at the bar just outside the door all throughout the ceremony if you get low. And please welcome our keynote speaker, Katie Cook. Hi, everybody. You'll be happy to know I've already gotten gravy and used my speech as a coaster, so I'm, I'm very on brand right now. So, but I wanted to thank everybody at Baltimore Comic Con and the folks who put up together the Ringos for asking me to do this talk tonight. I'm really glad out of the pool of they're already coming, you picked me. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> me. Um, but no, really, this is great. Um, I constantly question my place in this industry, so to be asked to stand here in front of you and talk about comics is a, a joy to me. Thank you so much. Uh, now, this is where I think it's appropriate to tell my Micro Ringo story, and I'm really sad to say that I don't have one. When I was getting into comics, Mike was very, very high above me. He was a veteran that I viewed as someone who was unaccessible. And I'm glad to know from others that he would never have viewed my work or myself as someone who was not worth talking to or not worth looking at myself. Last year when David Peterson gave the speech, he talked about something that Mike did that really struck a chord with me, and that was that Mike got up at almost every show and he walked around the convention and talked to creators, looked for new creators, and asked them about their books and bought their books. Not just known creators, but the, the apple-cheeked, doe-eyed babies of our field, the ones who just want to pinch their cheeks. But they're the ones that, that put their books together at Kinko's, and they're just there excited to talk about their comics. And I love that he picked up books from these people to learn from them, but he, even as that seasoned veteran that some of us viewed as so high above us, knew that he could learn something from the people on the ground floor. Thinking of that practice shows me a love of the medium and it tells me of an interest in always growing as a creator. And that practice is along the lines of what I want to talk about, the excitement of the new and what comics are and what they're becoming and the constant baseline of learning and having fun making them because, guys, comics are fun. And... Yeah. Thank you. I'm really glad everyone's on board with that. Because I make comic books as a job, and even on the most stressful, 
worst day of my job. It is the best day of my job because this is my job. It doesn't suck, guys. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the internet. Not that thing. Not that. I'm going to talk about the fun thing. We're going to talk about, like, the weird internet cousin who's homeschooled by their Aunt Becky who has 40 cats. That weird internet cousin of print books which are web comics. I guess more specifically, my own dawning realization about them. You know, I, I did that, that Winnie the Pooh, like, think, think, think of what am I going to talk about tonight? And I can't, I don't want to just wildly speculate about the industry. I don't want to yell at the clouds right now. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to go with the topic I know because web comics are so woven into my own path that led to me standing here on this stage. And if you already know how cool and interesting web comics have gotten, now is a good time to go get another drink or play Angry Birds, because I'm going to expound, for which I apologize, <laughs> but not really. Uh, web comics are where so many creators are now, instead of back in my day, young people self published with their zines and their ash cans. I owned a stapler. Like, that's not... It's not it. It's... I like how everybody likes my impression of my mom. <laughs> Don't tell her that. Um, but they're the new, new, and they're not new. They've been around since GeoCities pages and Neopets, but they're different now. And that is my... Whoever's making the scrapbook, that is baby's first back in my day. I don't know how I feel about it, but there. Oh, 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 oh. Um, but with the click of a few buttons and boom, not boom, some of those people are here, but, but bam, your, your comic is online for the world to see, and it's overwhelming because nowadays everyone and their cousin has a webcomic, and this, the content isn't curated, so there's this tumultuous sea of everything. And sorting through it is great and terrible, and I have seen things that will turn your hair white, but it's still full of things that are weird and interesting and fresh and fun. And through the internet, we are exposed to the world's comic passion projects, and I love that. I started my career in comics with a webcomic. It was with a little monster named Gronk that I learned how to tell a story how to make a joke on a page, how to promote myself. And after drawing it, that comic taught me how to love making comics just as much as I love reading them. But making a comic online even 10 years ago is a very different landscape than it is now. I got started posting comics on LiveJournal. LiveJournal! Are there any children here? That's the platform mommies and daddies used to post to instead of Tumblr. <laughs> Memes weren't a thing. It was dark times. It's, it was a long time ago. I'm young. But I had so much fun making that comic and interacting with people online who read it. Gronk was my passion project. I didn't make any money off of it. It was mostly from the books that I was so proud that I self-published at the time. And I could sell it shows just so I could say I made a book. And then I started to get work in comics, like work that my parents thought was real work. And I was doing licensed work here and there. But at the core of what I did, I still made Gronk every single week. And then My Little Pony happened. It's the first time that's going to be used ominously. <laughs> For now. <laughs> It was a book they only wanted me to write, and I was told it may only last a few issues, and it was great. This is going to be a fun project. Let's go. I spent five years writing that book, and I started to write and draw other books for other licenses, and I've bounced all over the place since I started my comics career, and it's been a blast. It's been fun. It's been amazing. I would not change anything about it except the page rate. Some of you really resonated with that one. 
There we go. And a while back is when I realized that in the eyes of the industry, I crossed this invisible line where I was no longer an indie creator. I was a mainstream creator. And crossing this line is an overwhelming turn in my career where I'm so proud to have my name attached to things. People know me from a Star Wars book they read to their kids, or they know me from My Little Pony. I'm proud of the stories I've made. But it's become a rarity for someone to ask me about Gronk. It still happens from time to time, and some people ask me when it's coming back. They ask me when it will come back because Gronk has not updated since April 2nd, 2015. And even back then, updates were getting to be polka dots. One comic here, one comic there, and never the regular updates it had been. Really, it died in 2014, and I was just clutching to it. Life was hectic, I had two kids and a mortgage, and this budding career as this comics creator, and my career in comics, amongst other things, killed my comic. <laughs> I was okay with it. Um, as I said, I love my job. It's fun, and my dream has always been to be a cartoonist. You know, when you're asking kindergarten, what do you want to be when you grow up? I've always said, I want to be a cartoonist. I'm really glad it worked out. I have no bad plan. It's like, I got nothing. Um, so to the present, um, this guy named Tame Eagle from Webtoon approaches me and said, I should do a webcomic. And I am the first person to admit, I thought he was offering me a step back in this career that I'd worked so hard to get to, not this step forward. I mean, I was, I was a fancy comic person now. I made book books. Book books are my husband's and my term for the book you put on the shelf. That's a fancy book book, not the digital copy. But I was getting a little burnt out since I wasn't drawing much, and I was really questioning where I was going with things, and Tom presented me with the opportunity, and I quote, to tell any story I want to tell. I was being offered a passion project again. Someone wanted me to go nuts and have fun making a comic. And I have to tell you, it was not fun at first. Like, do I have a story to tell that doesn't have a pony in it? I need the constraints of the license. Should I put a pony in it? I don't know how to do this anymore. Someone wanted me to go nuts and have fun making a comic. What? So I did it. And, um, but then in the ultimate act of self-depreciation, I named this comic Nothing Special. <laughs> Let that sink in. I built in a name that if it bombed, someone could look at it and say, that's nothing special, and be right. <laughs> that's where my headspace was. So I started to explore web comics again. Uh, just for research at first, and then for the enjoyment after that. And oh my god, there's so many of them. <laughs> but in this new landscape of webcomics that I was reintroducing myself to, people are having a blast. It was like I'd left a party that was really laid back, and I came back a few hours later, and there's a band, and everyone's dancing, and your 80-year-old neighbor's doing a keg stand, <laughs> and there's a horse in a clown costume for some reason. Apparently, I just had to put a pony in there. <laughs> it was pandemonium. And here I am, standing at the door, coming back in, going, what just happened? Creators are using sound and music to weave into their stories. They're playing around with animation and panels. People are using these innovative, scrolling land, like landscapes to tell their stories. And they don't care about the book book? <laughs> It's crazy. These things are only meant to be read on your phone in some cases. And creators of every orientation and race and voice are represented. Fans are passionate. There's a comic about every type of thing under the sun, and they're drawn up by people that are all younger than me and more talented than me, and I'm okay with it. It's great. These people are just over here in webcomic land having the time of their life. And I constantly find new web comics handling layouts and storytelling in ways I've never seen, and they challenge me. It's new. There are people reading them too. That's the thing that was when I was in web comics. It was like I have a reader. It's not my mom. Yay. 
But, you know, Webtoon has 5 million U.S. subscribers. <laughs> I thought that was a made-up number, like in comic books. Okay. And that was just one comic hosting site. There are others, and then there's people that host their own sites or people that just use Instagram or Twitter to post their comics. But I asked Webtoon because it's the one I have the direct line to, and some of their titles have hundreds of thousands of unique weekly readers. Globally, they have 50 million subscribers. And these readers are all very excited, and they're all very invested in comics. Their pull list is online. They know what days their favorites update. They leave thousands of comics, and they will send you 237 Instagram DMs if your comic is one hour late. <laughs> it's a dark day. I'm very bad at the internet. At one point, while I was off writing about pastel horses and, in general, ignoring hip things, web comics became mainstream comics. So I think it might be time to start treating them like it. They are not comics' weird cousin. They are a platform in our industry that has flourished, and I was wrong to think for even a second that dipping my toe back into them was a faltering step in my path. Web comics don't deserve the stigma of being a lesser medium or relegated to one or two industry awards when they span just as many amazing titles and creators as the print industry, or only treated with more respect after that comic is collected into a book book. Now, I talk about these comics constantly to the point of being obnoxious, as you all now know. Thanks for coming. I'm running into this buffer from some of my peers that thought the same way I did about webcomics after I left them, that they are somehow less of a thing because they are online. They aren't vetted by a publisher or their people's hobbies. Webcomics suffer from the thought that they aren't real because they're not tangible. If I had a nickel for every person who has told me that they would read my new project when I made it into a book, I can read I have a lot of nickels I could print the book with. It's okay. But I'm on a personal mission to redefine my conception of webcomics because they can be so much more than a page in a book. I think my next step is wandering around a convention handing out pamphlets about how much fun webcomics are. And every person that I know now that's like, I think I'm going to go do a creator own book. I'm that weirdo on the bar stool who's like, you want to have some fun? <laughs> you ever tried webcomics? Book books will always be important to me. But I also love the innovation and creativity that I see coming out of creators online. And I found myself inspired to try and make better comics based upon, uh, based upon what I find online nowadays. In the end, I drew a comic that's super weird about teenagers and the ghost of a dead radish that heckles them and a magical world that I made up. And to date, it's one of the most popular things I've ever made. And I'm having the time of my life relearning why I love to make comics. In the perfect summation of where I am now in my life, my new Star Wars book hit shelves October 2nd, my new chapters of Nothing Special book two start updating October 9th, and I hope I get to continue my work as a creator, both on and offline, and that every day continues to be the best day of my job because this is my job. Thank you for coming to my talk talk. Thank you to Katie for that fantastic keynote address. And if she thinks we only had an easy job of picking her, she has not looked at our guest list this year. <laughs> OK, uh, on to the awards. I am going to just announce people, and they're going to come up on stage um, and present. They're going to actually talk to you guys. Uh, first presenters of the, award of the night for the fan favorite awards are Christina Blanche and Tom Zoller.
Yes. I'm Tom. I'm Dr. Blanche. Are we using our made-up names? Because in that case, I'm Captain Awesome. I like Captain Hair Gel. It's Hair Whip. <laughs> anyway, those of us who create comics and those of us who sell comics do it for one reason, the fans. Um, actually, I do it for the money. There's money in comics? Not a lot. Uh, you should try running a comic shop. I could totally run a comic shop. Into the ground. Most likely. But telling a story without an audience is like a tree falling in the woods with no one to hear it. It's not until a story finds its audience that it truly lives and fulfills its purpose. Connecting with these readers is what it's all about. These fan chosen awards are a chance to let these readers connect back and let their voices be heard. Kind of like Twitter, but civilized. And this year includes a new category, too, Best Publisher. Stanley pioneered building a personal relationship between reader and publisher. And this year, we'll see who continues that tradition tonight. Excelsior! It's trademarked. <laughs> Fandom is an incredible thing. At its best, it's a source of enjoyment and happiness and unity. And fandom is better when it's inclusive, no matter your gender. Or your nationality. Or beliefs. Or your height. Height? I'm just saying, why are giants always the bad guys? The frost giants, the mountain on Game of Thrones. It's just heightest. Just announce the nominees, giant man. Paul Rudd, America's sweetheart. I'll take it. Do you want to do this one? I'll do this one. Okay. The first award is for fan favorite hero. The well in the envelope award. You have to open it. You have to open it. <laughs> I went in art so I didn't have to do hard things. The winner for fan favorite hero is Mags from Assassin Roommate. He is not here to accept the award. They are not here to accept the award, so we will do that for them. The next is fan favorite villain. Why did I get villain? No reason. Okay. Fan favorite villain. And the winner is Arlo Unordinary. We accept this award on behalf of Uru Chan. The next award is for fan favorite new series. And the winner is I Love You. I Love You Too. Right here. We accept this award on behalf of Quinn Chi. And then we have fan favorite new talent. It's got talent in it, so you're not up for it. Yeah. And it is Quim Chi. Again, we're going to accept this award on behalf of Quim Chi. And in our final award. Final award. Where are they? There they are. They're moving over. It was subtle. Nobody picked up on it. <laughs> For fan favorite publisher, Line Webtoon. Tom Akel, editor of Line Webtoon, sent me a message to read to you all. He says, hi, everyone. Katie, great speech. Dean, <laughs> please keep your shirt on until Tom's done reading this. I apologize. I would be there in person to accept this if we weren't launching 10 series in the next week, some of which I'm editing as Tom reads this. And I'm not going to name names, but you can tell the exact moment in Katie Cook's scripts when she's hit that third glass of wine. <laughs> First, we would like to thank Randy, David, Mark, and everyone from Baltimore Comic Con and the Ringos who have been so kind to us. Next, we'd like to thank all of you in the room and the comics industry at large. Just a few years ago, no one had heard of Webtoon in the U.S. Creators are the lifeblood of our company and have embraced us beyond what we could have ever expected. More importantly to our fans, this is a fan-voted award. We would not exist without you, our readers, reading your comments, meeting you at the cons, finding that so many of you are making the leap from reader to creator yourselves. These past four years have been amazing. It's your passion that inspires us every day. 
We have the best fans on the planet. This award is dedicated to all of you. Thank you so much from everyone at Webtoon. Cheers. Thank you, Tom and Christy. Uh, I should have prefaced that with uh, the statement that the fan awards, uh, it's purely during the nomination period, it is uh, mob rules and whoever gets the most votes wins, and that's what you just heard. Uh, those, those organizations, those publications and publishers and everything are the people that had the fans that stepped up, so uh, congratulations to them. Our next two presenters are Dave and Julia Peterson. Welcome to the stage. Hello. Hi, everybody. Forgive me, I'm super nervous. <laughs> David and I aren't very big uh, bit or sketch people. So. Uh, so we try to figure out what to say and. Um, I searched online for recent popular speeches that might be inspirational, uh, and I didn't find any that I wanted to use that didn't include the words bigly or wet water. <laughs> so, the nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Series are... Batman, DC Comics. Lady Killer, Dark Horse Comics. Mr. Miracle, DC Comics. Spencer and Locke, Action Lab Entertainment. Sunstone, Image Comics. And the award goes to... The best series, Mr. Miracle, DC Comics. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, uh, obviously, Mr. Miracle is um, a co-production. I don't do any of it. I, my scripts are so much worse than the comic. They're terrible, guys. Uh, but uh, Mitch Garrett draws the crap out of it, and he colors the crap out of it, and Clayton calls letters the crap out of it, and then um, uh, you know, then DC editors do nothing because we're the creators, and we should be responsible. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Rich and and uh, Brittany uh, Hollis do the rest, and. Um, uh, thank you always to my wife for this award is dedicated to Colleen. I love you and I can't wait to see you again. Thanks. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Original Graphic Novel are The Aggregate, Split Decision Comics, <laughs> The Best We Could Do, Abrams Comic Arts. Hostage, Drawn in Quarterly. My Favorite Thing is Monsters, Fantagraphics. Spinning, First, Second. And the award goes to... What's that? Did they already show it? Oh! oh. No. <laughs> Just should I say it anyway? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Best original graphic novel, my favorite thing is Monsters, Fantagraphics. We accept this award on Emil Frost and Fantagraphics' behalf. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Colorist. It's a colorful category. <laughs> Dijo Lima, Laura Martin, Dave McKay, Jason Smith, and Dave Stewart. It's my fault. That one's going to get enough attention. And the award goes to... Dave Stewart. And, and as, a, as a Dave, I will accept this on his behalf. The nominees for the 2018 Ring Award for Best Anthology are Magic Bullet, DC Conspiracy. <laughs> Mine, a celebration of liberty and freedom for all, benefiting Planned Parenthood, Comic Mix. 
Mirror Mirror 2, 2D Cloud. Overwatch Anthology Volume 1, Dark Horse Comics. SpongeBob Comics Treasure Chest, Harry and Abrams. And the award goes to... Mine, a celebration of liberty and freedom for me, benefiting Planned Parenthood, Comic Mix, accepting on behalf of mine are editors Joe Corallo and Molly Jackson. Wow, this is such an honor. Um, a big thank you to our amazing contributors. Some of you are in this room, but over 150 members of the comics community, our Kickstarter supporters who made this happen, everyone else who has picked up the book since and really shared its, its knowledge, and the team at Comic Mix, uh, Glenn Hellman and Martha Thomases, and a special thanks to Michael and Evelyn Crete for their invaluable guidance. And a very big thank you to Karen Spruck and the rest of the staff and volunteers at Planned Parenthood uh, who provide health care services to millions every day and who need our support now more than ever. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dave and Julia. Uh, next to present the Hero Lifetime Achievement Award. Dennis Callen. How's everybody doing? Y'all all right? Y'all having fun? This is so, so important and so, so dope to be here. I'd like to thank um, Baltimore Comics Con for inviting me and here is initiative especially for giving me the honor present this award to a very, very special person. He started his career during the Silver Age, a period that reintroduced comics to a young audience, simple stories softened by a comics code. But as the storytelling took root, he knew that there were more mature stories to tell and different directions to take with these characters. But to tell these stories, he had to get rid of the campiness of comics and to bring depth to the characters. Many historians credit him with ushering the Bronze Age and point to his run in the Justice League for proof. As the stories of Iowa become in the day youth culture and he looked through the social tensions of Cold War America for inspiration, his writing spoke to a maturing audience, introduced relevant social messages, and developed characters with consciousness for a modern world. From here, he established himself as a writer for the ages, launching many new titles. His return to Marvel Comics, can you guys hear me? Because it's going in and out. His return to Marvel Comics in 1980, taking on the scripting chores for the movie Spider Man, Iron Man, and Daredevil. While working for Marvel, he helped write the original character concepts for the Transformers and is credited as the person who named Optimus Prime. He solidified his lifetime standings in the industry when he came back to DC Comics and took over the editing and writing duties of the Batman books. And he's done so much. My personal story with this man is 1980, 1981. He's a punk kid, big afro, trying to get work at DC and Marvel, trying to get on any kind of way. And I remember Jim Shooter took me out for a walk around Marvel Comics, the building. Come on, Dennis, come with me. You're in the office all the time, so just come with me. So um, we took a walk around the block, and Jim says, you know, you know a little bit about martial arts, and he's looking at me, looking at me, and he goes, and you know a little bit about being black. I'm like, I don't know why he said that. And I'm thinking, where is this conversation going? I'm like, I'm freaking out that I'm with Jim Shooter anyway, and he's talking about you know a little bit more you know about being black. I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, would you like to draw a book called Power Man and Iron Fist? And I'm like, okay, because what 
what else are you going to say? We're like, okay. So he brings me back to Marvel, and he brings me into the office, and he brings me to an office, and he opens the door, and he says, and this is your new editor, Denny O'Neill. And I was like, fuck Denny O'Neill? <laughs> like, Green, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Denny O'Neill? Like, Batman, Denny O'Neill? Like, Denny O'Neill? <laughs> yes, it was Denny O'Neill. So, um, I worked with Danny on Power Man Iron Fist, and I'm a punk kid, right? I'm like going to do my very best. Every issue was like, I didn't do nothing right. <laughs> he just, and, he's, and like, I realized that I was in the presence of like an OG, the old school editor, right? Like this was the last of that breed, and Danny was that dude. So I would come in and hand him my assignments, and Danny would look at him. He got it now, I'm like cringing. He looked at him, flip over the pages, then proceeded to tell me everything I did wrong on every single page in a very quiet way, hand it back, go back and fix it when you come back. I was telling him, well, Walt Simons and I were talking this morning. It's like, that was my education. Bring it back, do it again, bring it back, I brought it back. And he never said, you did a great job. Never. You know what he did? You know how I know I did a good job? Reach in the drawer. Hand me another script. <laughs> That's how you really did a good job. Right? So, I get, right? And that's really, it, no, you did a good job of being great too, but that's how you know that you, you know, you, you're doing okay. You're getting another script. And literally, they used to open the file drawer and reach it and give you a script. Um, so, I get through that. I do Paramount and I at this, and I become whatever an established artist is, whatever that is. And uh, a couple of years go by, and now I'm working at DC. I'm doing stuff with Mike Gold. I'm drawing comic books and, and having a great time. I'm getting an issue. You know, I would kill things. So I did the Vigilante. The last two issues of Vigilante, I did it. I did V. Remember V? The TV series? I did two, the last two issues of that. I should have known. It was going to die. Right? So um, I finished these issues, and Dick Chardano calls me in his office. And I'm sitting there, and he says, so. And he's looking at me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, say me a little bit about the martial arts. That's what I do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Because I'm thinking, I'm going to in Dick Giordano's office anyway, right? My, my knees were trembling. It was like, really, like, freaky. And he goes, well, what, an artist who's going to do one of our books can't do it now. And I was looking, and I thought about you. Would you like to, would you like to illustrate a book called The Question? Now. I'm thinking, who's the question? No, I was thinking, <laughs> now I knew who the question was, but I was really thinking, well, didn't Steve Ditko do this, and didn't Alex Tope do a question? I'm thinking my style is nothing like theirs, but I'll take the damn answer. Yes, I'll take it. Of course I'm going to do the question. I love it. <laughs> so, I, um, I, I, so Dick Giordano takes me out of, the, out of his office, and we walk down a couple of steps. He opens the door and says, this is your new writer. And it was Danny O'Neill. And I'm thinking, man, I spent like two years trying to get over this. <laughs> And here I am again. But this time, I'm a mature artist. I know what I'm doing. I've done Power Man I this. I killed issues of comics by myself. <laughs> I know what to do. So I get the first question script. And I remember drawing it and bringing it in. And Denny was also editing up there, but he was also the writer on the question. And giving it to Mike Gold, who was tough and showing it to Denny, who just looked at it after all these years, <laughs> shook his head. <laughs> and it wasn't quite good enough. So, fix these panels, go home, fix these panels, come back in, 
and show me what you've done. This is my writer on the book, not even the editor. So I did that, and I realized, oh man, I'm in the presence of an OG writer. I'm in the presence of like, they don't make them like this anymore. This dude is like a real dude. So, and I'm, I know him from being an editor, but now he's my writer. And it's the same thing. <laughs> and I did three years on the question and a bunch of annuals Danny and I did together. Um, there were a lot of stories that, that he wrote. And, you know, people come up to me now and they talk about how much it meant to them and how deep it was and how great. Like, these stories are profound, man. You helped me through my youth. You helped me through this. And I'm thinking, this was the toughest three years of my life. <laughs> and, 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 oh my God, like, I remember all the stories, but they didn't affect me the same way they affected <laughs> you. And, and, and I, and I did that, we got through that, and we, we created some really great stuff together. And I realized something, as I, as I was walking up here, I realized something, and I'm thinking, you know what? I went through that, and I'm thinking about what I'm going to say about Kenny. Because it was tough for me. Just to be honest, it was not, there was no cake, there was no cakewalk. He ain't easy. Not no easy dude to do stuff with. You know, whatever fantasies people have about writers and artists working together, all that. It was like, it was work. But I realized, as I was walking up here, what happened? All Kenny was trying to do was get me to tell the best story I possibly could for our, for our readers and to become a better artist, to make my deadlines, to be responsible, and to be a better human being. I don't know if he succeeded in the better human being part, but he sure taught me almost everything I know about art and about comics, and without that experience, I wouldn't be standing here today. There'd be no milestone, there'd be no death lock, there'd be no question, there wouldn't be anything that happened after that, because every, I was formed and forged in those years with Danny O'Neill. So it brings me great pleasure. It is my, my deepest honor to present the, the Comics Initiative Lifetime Achievement Award to Mr. Danny O'Neill. This has been a, a pretty upbeat and cheerful occasion, and I hate to be the, the bringer of bad news, but uh, I think an occasion like this shouldn't pass without our making notice that a couple of days ago, uh, Norm Brayfogle died. A couple of weeks ago, a friend of comics, Harlan Ellison, died in the last year. We've lost Len Wein and Chloe Steinberg. And uh, a lot that my ancient brain is not wrapped around at the moment. Uh, we owe these people. I mean, I would, I would kill to work with Norm again. And he was also a joy from the editor's standpoint. So I just wanted to mention them. As far well as the rest of it, uh, I had one of those epiphany moments in uh, Canada last year. What is the name of that little town? Best comic book shop in the world, according to. Hmm? 
I'm sorry, I, I don't hear very well. Or... No, it's... Uh, it's <laughs> um, anyway, the, the epiphany came <laughs> when I realized that I have been blessed because I had some rough years as a, as a young guy Never met a bourbon bottle I wanted, didn't want to empty for about 10 years. But mostly, this has been a great ride. Uh, I think it was Ernest Hemingway who said, oh, of course, it's easy to be a writer. You just sit in front of a piece of paper until you sweat blood. And I say, Ernie, get over yourself, okay, man? Uh, if you want a tough job, get a cab. I want a ship. Work in a factory. We live in uh, work in comfortable surroundings. If you're in a collaborative medium like we are, we work with great, smart, talented, funny, loyal people. Uh, given my limitations and my talents, there could not have been a better job for me than being the Batman editor. And when I started, a comic book editor was a guy who wore a suit and tie, and uh, and I took the subway in from Queens, got two weeks vacation, no expense account, no royalties, and now we are respectable. We are taught in virtually every major university. We have gotten uh, what I think has always been our rightful place in what Stephen King calls storytelling devices. That's what we do. We use this particular medium and we try and figure out its strengths and its weaknesses and then we use that to tell a story. So, um, gee, I am so grateful to the fans. I have had the best damn life I could ever imagine. Uh, the people in this room are partially responsible for it, and the people out there thronging those hallways, I am forever grateful to them. Whenever I, I get snotty and sound like I'm looking down on them, I apologize, because they have given me the best life I could possibly have had. I thank you for that, and I thank you for this. Thank you, Dennis and Denny. That was fantastic. Our next two presenters coming to the stage, please welcome Jenny Frizen and Ramona Freyden. Hi, I'm Jenny Frizen. Hi. <laughs> That's Ramona. <laughs> um, thank you. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Kids Comic or Graphic Novel are... Bolivar, Arkea Boom Studios. <laughs> Taiko Keo, a comic book adventure you can color. Alternate comics. <laughs> DC Superhero Girls, DC Comics. Dog Man, A Tale of Two Kitties, Graphics. <laughs> Home Time, Book One, Top Shelf Productions. <laughs> if found, please return to Elise Gravel, Drawn and Quarterly. <laughs> Gem and the Holograms, IDW Publishing. 
Keep the Tree, Arcanic Comics. And Red's Planet, Friends and Foes, Harry N. Abrams. And the award goes to... DC Superhero Girls, DC Comics. Accepting on behalf of DC Comics is Stuart Peck. Stuart Track from DC. Um, from everybody who worked on DC Superhero Girls, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jenny Prison. <laughs> <laughs> the nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Humor Comic are Baking with Kafka, Drawn and Quarterly. Batman, Elmer Fudd Special, DC Comics. <laughs> Boyfriend of the Dead, Line Webtoon. <laughs> Giant Days, Boom Studios. <laughs> My Giant Nerd Boyfriend, Line Webtoon. <laughs> and this last one is will require a little delicacy. No, do it, do it. I'll go ahead, I'll go for it. Shit, my president. Thank <laughs> you production. And the award goes to... Batman Elmer Fudd Special. <laughs> when I was first offered the job. Send it right here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. I thought, I'm, I'm a, I do serious stories. What are they offering this to me for? But it was the boss who called, so you can't say no to the boss right off. And then he mentioned this guy's name. I didn't know Tom King was Tom King, but I had met Tom. Send it right here! Right, 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 right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I just... I, I draw the things, I don't read them on it, unless it's the truth. It's the truth, I apologize. But I had met Tom at a convention when he had written his novel, and he'd just done like a couple of little... So when, when Dan said... He did a couple of little... He had, right? He did a couple of little uh, short stories for Dark Horse, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got this right. I've got this right. <laughs> But we had such this marvelous talk back in 2012 when I was on one side of the table and he was on the other. And it's really, really just connected with it. And so when Dan said, and Tom came, I said, man, I, and I think we had actually talked about possibly working on something someday. So I wanted to talk to Tom first. And I just have to say, this has been like, geez, this book and this guy have been the biggest gift at this stage of my career. And thank you all for this is a true story. I called Lee halfway through drawing the book, and I said, Lee, you are working too hard. <laughs> it's Elmer Fudd. <laughs> it does not have to look like year one. <laughs> And uh, he didn't listen to me. 
And now we won an award with uh, my, the best artist in comics. And I'm grateful for Lee. And I always say, but um, and before just to my wife, Colleen. So I love Thanks. And my wife, Chris Cole. She's great for the way. She's great for the way. Thank you very much. I love you very much. The nominees for the 218 Ringo Award for Best Letter are Colin Bell, Justin Birch, Todd Klein, David Rubin, and John Workman. And the award goes to Todd Klein. John was going to win this one. <laughs> John and I have worked together. He's John's the man who got me started with Lettering. I just realized that he and Joe Staten and I were all at DC when I started, and it's and you know it's been great a great career. I love doing it. What can I say except I, I very much appreciate it. And uh, let's let's get John up here soon, shall we? <laughs> for the 218 Ringo Award for Best Presentation and Design are Jane, Boom Studios, <laughs> Monograph, Chris Ware, Rizzoli, Monsters, Volume 1, The Marvel Monster Bus, Valiant Entertainment, My Favorite Thing is Monsters, Santa Graphics, Saga, Image Comics, Skyborn, Boom Studios, X-Men, Grand Design, Marvel Comics. And the award goes to Saga, Image Comics. We accept this award. On Images we have. Thank you, Jenny Romero. I like how Lee pulled us out of the fire real quick at the end there. It's close. You saved yourself your wife. <laughs> okay, uh, next award of the night is the uh, Michael Ringo Spirit Award. Please welcome to the stage Todd Zago, Craig Russo, Mark Wade, and Matt Laringo. So earlier while we were uh, while we were eating dinner, um, I couldn't help but think uh, if Mike were here with us tonight, he um, I think really he would have been saying, um, "Dude, everyone's eating meat at my award ceremony." <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry, Mike. Um, since its inception, lo, these many one year ago, the, the Spirit of Ringo Award has been presented to the comic book or graphic novel, which we feel best exemplifies the type of comic that Mike would have gotten excited about. A story that's both entertaining and engaging, storytelling that is accessible and compelling, and art that is imaginative and brave. And um, personally, I feel like 
This award goes to the book that Mike probably would most have wanted to draw if he were, if he had had the opportunity. Um, so they'll remember mostly for his energetic, animated, and fun style. Mike appreciated comics of any stripe, be they superhero, crime, horror, humor, fantasy, or biographical. He loved manga. He loved to look at artwork of all styles from artists all around the world and would come alive when he could see the passion behind their pens and pencils. He loved, too, to see a young artist taking his or, his or her first attempts at comics at proportion in storytelling and encourage them to chase their wildest dreams. Greg Pock, the film director and comic book writer whose credits include the X-Men, Alpha Flight, Iron Man, Hercules, Batman, Superman, Silver Server, Warlock, and War Machine. He's responsible for giving the Hulk a, a planet and then having that planet go to World War something. I think he, he, he launched uh, two Kickstarters, though. Uh, two successful Kickstarters to publish his creator own books, Code Monkey Save World and The Princess Who Saved Herself, both with artist Takeshi Miyazawa and both based on songs by Jonathan Colton. Greg's films include Robot Stories, Mr. Green, and Happy Fun Room. So, uh, Takeshi Miyazawa is a comic book artist. He's Canadian and studied art at Queen's University in Ontario. His credits include Runaways, X-Men, Robotech, Mary Jane, Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane, Sidekicks, and Young Avengers. But because that's pretty much all on Wikipedia had on him, and he's not here to confirm or deny anything, we decided to make the rest out. Takeshi is a master chef, an industrial spy, and an amateur wrestler wrestling under the name The Towering Speck. He currently holds the record for most consecutive viewings of Norbert at a whopping 42 times. <laughs> he has a tremendous singing voice and has received multiple awards for his public speaking. He devotes four hours of each day to, quote, tightening up his fidget spinner game. <laughs> he dines in complete silence. <laughs> you Mechadite U takes place in a world where a unique group of youngsters are trained in hopes of being paired with one of five giant robots come to aid us in defending the Earth from an invading alien race known as the Shard. Starry-eyed cadets train hard at the Skycourt Academy with the single goal of being selected by one of the colossal robots to battle the Shard and protect their world. Though class and advantage for a large part in achieving a place in the cadet program, an accident puts a juvenile janitor named Sanford Yu in the wrong place at the right time, and he finds himself chosen to be partner to one of the recently arrived robots, fighting to prove that he is capable and courageous enough, while also dealing with the minefield of jealousy and resentment that are part of any adolescent dynamic. Stanford works in to earn the trust of his robot and teammates in an adventure that proves to pull at your heart and catch your breath. Cleverly crafted by Greg, Greg, yeah. Greg Pock and joyously brought to vivid life by Takeshi Miyazawa, Mekka You, published and presented by the wonderful folks at Boom, is our choice this year for the Michael Ringo Awards Spirit of Ringo Award. Filled with joy, hope, and the rewards that come with believing in yourself, Mechadet U checks all the boxes. Here to accept the Spirit of Ringo Award for Mechadet U is Greg Pop. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I, I, it's uh, a little overwhelmed. And I've been working in comics for 14 years. It's my first time to like uh, give a speech. So <laughs> the comics industry. I'll keep it short. I just want to say thank you so much, particularly for this award. It means the world to me. This is a book that everybody who worked on it put all of their heart into it. Uh, it's, I, I, it's, it's the opposite of cynical. It's everything we got. Um, and uh, and it, it's it's overwhelming and incredibly gratifying the way folks have received it. Uh, you guys have received it with all your hearts, and 
and all of you, thank you so much. Um, I, and uh, this award is shared uh, with the entire creative team, Takeshi Miyazawa, my, uh, just, he's, he's my favorite guy, he's, he, he's an incredible artist. Carolina Farrell and Jessica Colleen and Raul Angulo all uh, worked on the colors on this book, and they gave it, uh, the colors are, that's half of, I mean, that's half of what you feel. You know, they, they, they brought such a warm and exciting palette to this book to make it sing. Uh, Simon Boland is the letterer, and, um, and everybody at Boom has been so supportive. I mean, um, uh, my editors, Cameron Chirock and Eric Harburn, I, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but I would send them scripts and then I would wait eagerly for their notes. Um, uh, because, because these notes would come back and be like, yes, everybody in this book just wanted to make it better. And it was just, it's one of those special little projects where every little thing that anybody ever did on this book just, it, everybody was just trying to make it as, as just fly. And um, it's, it's been my favorite thing to work on in years. Um, Alone and Stephanie and Philip and, and, uh, and, and, and Mel and Ross, all the people at Boom. And then also I wanted to give a special shout out to the editors of the Secret Identity Shattered Asian American Comics Anthology. Because before this became a Boom book, it was uh, a short story in this anthology. And um, Jeff and Perry and Keith and Jerry uh, were the first people to say yes to this. So thank you to them. And, um, and finally, just thank you to all the readers and um, reviewers and retailers who supported this book. This book was originally just uh, approved as a four-issue mini. Um, and uh, because people loved it and, and, and talked about it and shared it uh, and bought it, buying it is really important, um, uh, it was able to become a 12-issue storyline. And uh, we got to tell the whole story, and it's, it's been one of the true joys, uh, lasting joys of my whole career. And just thank you so much to everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next two presenters are Rob Stowe and Gus Vasquez. Everybody all right? Awesome. We're doing it tonight. Hello, everyone. Uh, much like Lee, I also draw and don't read anything. Uh, so when I got boxes and boxes and boxes of books, I decided to stay the course, throw everything aside, and given our political climate right now, I just didn't read anything and I just wrote in Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Not true at all. Let me start. Yeah, I got it. Okay. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Web Comic are 1000, Chuck Brown and Sanford Green. I love you, Kenichi. 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 Middle Age, Steve Conley. <laughs> Sally's Lemon. It's an instant miso. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and Will Cry, Dean Ashburn. Just, uh, you know, thanks to my wife and my kids for supporting me. Um, everybody that voted, um, all the guys who worked on 1000, 
into a de- very different and how to pass away that we started this all Bruce Brown. So thanks. Um, all right, this is a little emotional for me because about 20 years ago, um, Chuck just mentioned this guy's name. His name is Bruce Brown. You don't know him, um, but he is responsible ultimately for green lighting this deal. Um, we were both in college trying to figure this thing out. Um, he shortly went his way, and I went my way. And um, long story short, he got sick and you know, passed away from cancer. And um, I was like, man, we never got to do something together. And then it dawned on me um, that we had this project. And I said, you know what? As an honor to him, I'm going to do this thing. So I just kind of pulled together some, I don't know, this is before Kickstarter was a thing, I guess. Um, I started doing uh, self-publishing. I started to put this thing together. And um, Tom Ako, who is now at Webtoons, he, before he became the Reds, uh, came to uh, Webtoons, he saw me at a convention, and he's like, I don't know what this is, but this looks awesome. You need to turn this into something else. Maybe we can do something with it, because I got something really big happening in about six months. That really big thing was Webtoons. And, um, and um, he, he called me up and said, hey, it just happened. I'm now the, I'm the guy at Webtoons. I would love for you to come and join us and, and be a part of this family. And I said, you know what? Let's do it. And, um, you know, Katie, she was on point when she said that, uh, that this thing is a whole new world. And uh, just to be a part of it was so eye-opening. And, um, again, just, you know, just being a part of that family has definitely been an incredible experience. And um, I thank him for the opportunity and, um, you know, my family for putting up for those long hours because this is not – like a regular comic, you got to do this thing every week. It's not a monthly gig, it's a weekly gig, and so you have to know how to schedule that. So I love my wife for putting up with me for all the attitudes and stuff uh, that she had to deal with with that. Uh, my kids as well, and a uh, special shout out to uh, the uh, Brown family, uh, Bruce Brown's family. Uh, this one's for you, brother. Thank you. We have the nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Cover. We have uh, Michael Cho, <laughs> Sam Dalton, Simon Fraser, Joel Jones, Bill Black, and Bill Santiago Jr. nothing prepared because I never win any cake. I'm, I'm just going to pee myself. Uh, I just want to say thanks to uh, uh, Mike Ringo actually, because uh, when I was starting out and I was like, uh, I was an editorial illustrator, I was thinking about breaking the comics, uh, there used to be a little online forum called uh, the drawingboard.org and uh, a lot of, I met a lot of friends there and uh, a lot of them were, they were really great artists and Mike was the first pro that uh, gave me a critique and he was super positive and I was like, you know, I was on cloud nine and I thought, wow, you know, Michael Ringo likes my stuff. So uh, and that went a long way and made me feel really comfortable about uh, the idea of doing comics. Um, I want to thank the, um, the editors that gave me a lot of freedom to do whatever I wanted and, uh, and uh, the voters and the other nominees because they're all great artists. And uh, I especially want to thank my wife, who is also a really good artist, because uh, uh, she was there with me when I would sit there and go, like, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got, I got two days left, and I got nothing. And she would sit there with me, and, and we would 
brainstorm ideas or I'd show her thumbnails and she'd go, you know what, if you took this out and swapped this thumbnail for this and I'd go, oh, that's a great idea. And then I'd see it in my head and I'd draw it. So I just want to thank her because she was there for everything and uh, my kids that I'm super nervous being on stage. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nonfiction comic work are the best that we could do. Abrams Comic Arts. Everything is available on civilized books. Going into town, a love letter to New York means very much. Bowie and my colleagues at Abrams Comic Arts, I want to thank everybody. Um, the best thing to do is a story about T. Bowie and her coming to America uh, as an immigrant. And when we decided to publish it, we had no idea that we were going to be on trend. So I thank you for uh, on her behalf. And I do want to dedicate this to Clarissa Wong, who was an editorial assistant who works for me, worked for me at Abrams. And As an editor, I never, I never hire anybody who's white and Jewish because I got that covered. But um, I always hire somebody who has a different perspective. And Danny O'Neill once said, "Hire well and get out of the way." And if it wasn't for, for Clarissa, who found this on the web, pursued it, developed the project, brought it to our, our editorial meeting, and fought for it, we wouldn't be able to publish it. So I want to thank her for this. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Single Issue or Story are Batman Annual Number 2, DC Comics. <laughs> Batman Elmer Fett Special, DC Comics. Tuesday Clark Number 1, DC Comics. <laughs> I am Blue. And the award goes to DC Comics. Colleen, she's still wonderful. I also have two. I have three kids, they're okay. Um, the girl's good. Uh, no, um, uh, I, 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 I saw um, uh, uh, Paul McCartney recently was you know, doing one of these interviews to promote something, and, and, and the, the interviewer asked, like, do, do you always think you're, you're um, working on your, your best stuff in that moment? And there was a long pause, and Paul's like, um, well, I was in the Beatles. <laughs> 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 
Nick, you asked me if you're know, someone who asked me, do you think you're working um, on your best stuff? And I will say, um, well, I've got to work with Lee Weeks. And, um, and what an honor it was. I felt so bad when I sat there. I, I, I didn't finish the story. About a week into working on this book, I started telling friends back home where I grew up in Maine, the buddies from the comic shop days way back, that I was working on this book, Batman Only Fought in it. And as I think just about everybody I've spoken with said they just couldn't get their head wrapped around it, which is where I was when I got to think. But about a week to ten days into the project, I started calling the same buddies and saying, I think I might be working on one of the two or three best things I've ever worked on. Cause, and it wasn't even what he originally intended. No, 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 I'm serious. No, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Hold on. What I'm saying is, look, I've, I've never done this before. So just bear with me. But I'm just saying, he, he had an original idea that he adapted to some of my sensitivities. And he, he took things in a different direction just based on our first conversation. And his, this guy's ability to adapt, to write to the guy he's working with, is just, uh, it's been amazing. It's been really incredible. And uh, it really is one of the very best, most favorite books I've ever worked on. I don't care that it's Batman or Fight. I, I love those guys. I, I, I can't believe it. And the, the other thing I wanted to correct, when I said I don't read, I don't have time to read as many comics as I'd like. It's not any disdain. I love this form. I love the form of the stories and pictures. I absolutely adore it. I wish I had more time to read everybody's book. I really do. Thank you very much. And I read my work. Likely Lee rescued himself with us at the end there. Our uh, next presenter for the uh, Dick Giordano Humanitarian Award is Louise Simons. Um, hi. Um, Marco Draco is a writer best known for Manhunter, Batwoman, Wonder Woman 77, and he co wrote the 1999 Eisner Award winning Torso. Um, when tragedy struck in June 2016, the Pulse, at the Pulse Night Gown sh um, <laughs> nightclub shootings, he organized the Love is Love anthology to create a 144-page um, book almost overnight. It was released by IDW in collaboration with DC Comics he raised $165,000 for victims through Equality Florida. <laughs> when everyone said somebody should do something, Mark and Draco jumped up and did it. And Dick Giordano would be really proud of him. She made me sound. Um, this is this is overwhelming. Um, as I said in a bunch of the interviews for this, I grew up with We Are the World and Live Aid, and my reaction was, let's do something to give back. I wanted to process my grief and my frustration and my sadness, and hopefully inspire people. And the comics community rose to the occasion. So this book would not be possible without the over 600 people that went from. June 16th when the disaster happened to have the book on the stands in December. And uh, if it's the only thing I'm ever known for, if it's the only thing in my obituary, I am privileged because this book has touched so many people's lives around the world. There are seven foreign editions of this published around the world. 
They continue to raise money for LGBT charities in foreign countries, including France, Portugal, Spain, Brazil, Germany. Um, it, it's been overwhelming, and it's been an absolute privilege to do something to give back. Uh, the world's a really rough place now, and uh, to give back in any way, shape, or form and make anyone's life easier is a privilege and an honor. And to have Louise Simonson introduce me and have an award named after the great Dick Giordano, um, I'm a very lucky man, and I want to dedicate this award to the 49 people who died and all the other people who have died in gun violence in this country, and I want to thank the comics community and everyone for helping and do, doing good in a really dark time. So thank you very much. Almost there. Uh, I don't know what to expect from these set of last presenters. One of the two of them, and I'll let you figure out which one tweeted. I would say, but not in the cheap sense. stretch. Uh, Greg, thanks for uh, filling in for Lane Carl Kiesel. Happy to do it. Happy uh, to do it. Yeah, yeah, like that, you love it. You you just won something and immediately <laughs> you're drafted into having to present. It's, I'm much less nervous you're doing awesome. this. Fast trajectory okay. through this industry. Thank you. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, this is a, a great, I just want to congratulate everybody who put this together. This is maybe the best balanced award I've ever seen. It's just a huge variety of books here in uh, web comics, and uh, I don't know how you did that, but congratulations. Uh, and it reminds me why we probably all got into comics: the healthcare. <laughs> uh, so the nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Artist or Penciler are Gary Frank. Mitch Gibbs, Chris Sony, Steve Van Sachet, and Lee Weeks. Oh man, it's good stuff. It's Lee Weeks. <laughs> so much. I can't believe this. I, I just, I really can't believe it. Thank you. And I still want to finish that previous story. I want to thank Yvonne for doing a great job on the colors. On that other book. And, and, uh, and we had a great editor in Joey. But I don't know what to say, guys. I, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed by this, and thank you, everybody, and thanks for everybody that's been a part of this. And, and uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Have you met Chris? Have you met Chris? You should come down and talk to us tomorrow. Come down and talk to us tomorrow. Thank you so much for saying this. That's all I should put up with you. She's been there from the beginning. Um, I really do love this forum. I love it more than ever. I don't know what's happened, why this has happened, but the last two years have been the best of the of the entire 32-year run, and I feel hopeful that it's going to continue to get better. I get excited seeing and hearing about the the new things that are going on, even though I, I don't read a lot of them. <laughs> I want to, though. That's my resolution for the upcoming year. If you come by tomorrow, I'll do a couple of card tricks for you. <laughs> Thank you very much.
the nominees for the 2018 Ranger Award for Best Comic Strip or Panel are Bloom County, Berkeley Breaded, Universal Euclid. Next, Chuck McDonald, Film Feature Syndicate. Pinozos, Don Mathias, www.pinozos.com. Pearls Before Spring, Stefan Pastis, Universal Euclid. Okay. Sarah Scribbles, Sarah Anderson, Andrews McKeel, Universal. And the award goes to Sarah Scribbles, Andrews McKeel, Universal. Accepted on behalf of Sarah is Jose Villa Rubia. It's an honor to accept this award for Sarah. Sarah was my student at MICA, so she's a MICA alumna. And on behalf of MICA, we're very, very proud that she's won this award. She was a wonderful student, and this could not be better. Thank you. Oh, man, now we're uh, getting into the best writer. That's what you and I do. <laughs> That's something. Do you like we write? Is this the red list? A crowd comes over a hill. <laughs> Have fun with it. Yes. <laughs> Reflected in a giant mirror, riding horses up a staircase. Okay. And the nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Writer are Jason Aaron. <laughs> Neil Gaiman. <laughs> Matt Kent. Tom King. Jack Lemire. Ellen Bush McKenna. And David Pickles. And the award goes to. Hey, Greg, we won it. This is fun. Oh, this is fun. The prize. Thanks, Lincoln Everett. It's Tom King. <laughs> The white thing, yeah. Uh, sort of the kid thing. Uh, so the, the, the elephant, of Roxy, she's awesome. Uh, mostly the dog, forget the first two. Uh, uh, no, not the wife, don't forget the wife. Remember, the, the dog, wife, kids. Okay, you, you're good on the order. Uh, so this, this is a true word, too. Uh, um, I, I, was a, I was afraid of my nerd as a kid. That seems weird, but I was collecting comics but didn't want to tell my friends or family or anyone. I just, like, did hit it in my room. And I, I, I loved them. It's all I did all the time was read comic books. And I, I, so I went to a convention because I didn't want to be seen at a convention. As bizarre as that. And so the first comic convention I went to was here um, in Baltimore, D.C., and uh, I went in 2010 uh, or 9 or 11, somewhere around there. And... Um, <laughs> and uh, I was a fan. I, I waited in line to, to meet Rob and ask him the dumbest question a fan could ask him. And I, I, I purchased one thing at the whole con. I purchased a, um, a, a Michael Ringo page from, from uh, Wade and Ringo's that that's before. It was the first time for, for you guys. Um, it was the first art I ever It was the first actual connection to a comic book. I'd ever had, and I, I put it above my desk, and I worshipped it like it was a sacred object, and I looked at the lines, and it was, it was like, I mean, I can still see the pages there. And I came back the next day, and I bought another Ringo page, and I was like, that was what I did. It was, and, and that's how I got into this industry, was, was looking at these Ringo pages and copying what it went down. I've done it every year since. I have like eight pages of it. So I, I, just, I love this medium. I love comics. I love your work. I like slackerly. I actually read all this shit. Um, And so, and so just, just, just thank you for making any comments that, 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 have, that have, I've, I've, I've just, I've, thank you so much, that's all I'm saying. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Inker are J. 
Jonathan Glapian. Mark McCullough. Danny Mickey. Mark Morales. And Scott Williams. And the award goes to. Mark Morales. I work with this year, including Jimmy Chung on uh, yes, Justice League and Ed McGinnis on Avengers, and of course, I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Claire, who's upstairs watching my child who's sick. Later. Dude, we're at the last category. We are at the last category. This means everybody can go to the bathroom. This is going to be great. And the bar. The nominees for the 2018 Ringo Award for Best Cartoonist are Guy Delure, <laughs> Emil Ferris, <laughs> Monica Gallagher, <laughs> Joel Jones, <laughs> Quincy, and Joanne Tarkey. Not bad. And the award goes to Oh man. Oh man. That's good stuff. Carol Jones. Yeah. So she's not here. Well, wait, I can get her on the phone. She's she's in Portland like me. I can totally call her. Yeah. And so one of my ex uh, studio mates. They do these yeah, these special Portland phones, right? Yeah. Uh, if I get it on this phone, get her in if you want. You hear a little. Man, you killed my bit. <laughs> Am I over there working the board so much? Okay. So, anyway, how's your Kickstarter going, Greg? Oh, yeah, yeah. I do have a Kickstarter going, don't I? Yeah. How many days you got left on it? About uh, 17, I think. It's, it's called The Princess Who Saved Her Friends. Saved Her Friends. Yeah. That's, that's excellent. It's good that we're live streaming on Facebook, too, you know, because yeah. Facebook people are sitting there by their computers and could just type yeah, in. Yeah, you could be, while you're waiting, you could go check out that Kickstarter. You There's a video, you probably. Could. Yeah. Is that a Colton involved in this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact. Oh, they, uh, so what are, what are you working on, Jeff? Oh, uh, James Bond Origin just came out. Oh, uh, I love that. It's excellent. Thank you. I actually uh, did read that. It is excellent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm working on that with uh, Bob Quinn. And uh, <laughs> you're working on a James Bond book. Oh, I am. It's crazy. Oh, 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 I can't, can you hear me? I can't see anybody. Yeah, I'm on time. Can you hear us now? I can hear you now, but I can't see you. Oh, you don't have to see us. It's, we're looking good, though. Yeah. 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 Yes, there's a, did, did you hear the part where, where you know what you won? I mean, I told my hands like that's why I skyped in. No, you <laughs> That's why you won an award show. <laughs> You're the most confident in the universe now. What? Yeah. You're working, aren't you? Yeah. How late do you think you're going to be working tonight? I don't know how late you are working tonight. Uh, pretty late. We're, you know, <laughs> uh, we're on the East Coast. Huh. Well, let her give a speech. Okay, please give a speech. A uh, speech? Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's awesome. So, uh, today, so thanks to everybody, uh, you know, we're glad, um, so I guess I just want to thank, uh, Rob Lord for having us to be here, about us, so, uh, for John Lynch, my ex-fair, who is one of my best friends, and, uh, is always there for me, and everybody else that works with me, uh, is who works Craig, and Josh Reed, um, for, uh, 
already know my little previous script, but I'm really very inspired. Uh, I'm so nervous for mine for uh, putting up this um, the crazy lifestyle of a uh, cult artist. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's all good fun. Well, I'll, I'll bring the award to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> That almost worked. <laughs> okay, uh, so one of our challenges is to get you guys out of the room. That's not too bad. It's just shy of 11. Not as early as I thought we'd be, but not too bad. Uh, thanks to, uh, to all the presenters. Uh, we ask people to come up and get on stage and talk about people they know and they don't know and, you know, sometimes names they can't pronounce or whatever. We really appreciate them coming up and doing this. It's a big deal. Um, congrats to all the nominees and the winners alike. Um, if you have not read the books on these lists, I mean, this is a great set of things to go pick up next time you're in a comic shop. Uh, the, the nominations from the, the jurors and the, the public, uh, everybody was rabid about this stuff. They really enjoyed these things, so take a look. Um, if you want an award, we have boxes for secure shipping or transport, whatever. Come up to the stage when you're done. Uh, Bistro 300 is on the third floor here in the hotel. It is open until, well, last call is at 1.30. They stay open until 2. We'll see you there, folks. Thank you.